tell us a little about where you come from. So I'm born and raised in Los Angeles. Uh, born in Santa Monica. I've lived in California for just about my whole life. And I've lived all over California. I've lived in Northern California for a little while, San Diego. But the majority of my life has been here in Los Angeles. Um, so right now we're, we're in Redondo Beach. This is where I went to high school and stuff. Yeah. Um, this is where I would say is, is home for me. All right. So what pulled you towards fighting? Like what actually put you towards that way? Like how did that even like was it represented to you? So I would say a couple things. I grew up as a kid who watched a lot of professional wrestling. And I loved that, like Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, and things like that. I was a huge wrestling fan growing up. And then I started finding out that it was fake, and well, I was kind of heartbroken, bro. And this is like 2099, maybe 2001. Right. This is when UFC was starting to get big. Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture, and stuff like that. Yeah. And that, bro, it's as real as it gets, as they used to say. And it's fucking, it was dope. It stole my heart from wrestling very quickly. And in 2001, I was working with a guy, and he's like, hey, bro, I'm going to start doing some kickboxing. I want to lose weight. You down to do it with me? And I was like, yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. And I fucking had fun. And I had an older brother. I was an older brother, so, like, you could grow up rough, you know, like. Right. I had the same thing. Yeah. Right, you know, like, so I I like I liked doing it. I like getting into playing rough, and I'm a pretty opinionated person, and I don't mind standing up for what, what I believe in, regardless yeah. of what it is, and. Sometimes that leads to fucking scrapping with motherfuckers. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, violence is a very convincing form of communication. You know, you don't even have to speak the same language as a motherfucker and you can commit some of some shit. Yeah. And it's a motherfucker walking down the street to give you his wallet with a little bit of violence, you yeah. know, like. So I enjoyed playing rough. I was pretty good at him. It's a very strategic game as well. Um, and so I just, I liked it. I started doing grappling shortly after that and I just, I fell in love with it, and it, it really stole my heart from professional wrestling. This is like 2001 I started training, 2000 maybe, my freshman year of high school. So I've been training for about 21 years, Dope. on and off. All right, so besides the love of all right, doing that, like, do you brand yourself or anything like that? Absolutely. So early on in my career, branding's a big thing that I... I implement a lot of now. As you can see, I got a bulletproof troop shirt on. Right. I hooked you up with a dope jersey. I get this on camera. You know, so, uh, re so with branding, early on in my fight career, I wasn't getting paid a whole lot of money. Fighters don't necessarily make a whole lot of money unless there's something special. When I say something special, look at a guy like Conor McGregor. Right. Who has a, a he is a brand in himself. You know, I call myself Bulletproof Troop. That's my brand. Right. But it is, it's Blake Bulletproof Troop. But the reason I did that was the first nine fights of my career or so, I was more on an adventure than building a career. Right. And as I progressed through it, I started seeing guys like Conor McGregor. Who, can Conor fight? Conor can absolutely fight. He, he's an incredible fighter. But Conor got catapulted through the rankings much faster than a lot of other people right. because he's marketable. He comes out, he talks, and he, he's got like little catchphrases and all these different things. And a big thing about it is the entertainment value he brings. Right. And there's a lot of other people like that. There's a guy named CM Punk who was a WWE guy. Debut, his debut fight was in the UFC. And a lot of people were pissed, including myself. Like, Man, I've been training for 15, 16 years. This guy who's been training for two or three gets in the UFC. It's happened a lot. You know, and initially at that point in time, I was, I was kind of mad about it. Or like a little bitter. But the more I thought about it is, fuck, he's getting special treatment out. Why? Yeah, I, want to get, I want to get special you treatment study here. Him, yeah. I'm not going to sit here and hate. I'm going to fucking pick up game from these people. Yeah, right. CM Punk had a, a full brand behind him, the following and all that stuff. So when he came to the UFC, so he was able to debut in the UFC. Right. So I started looking at stuff. I was like, fuck, what can I do to start getting some, some special treatment? So I started calling myself Bulletproof Troop. I got the big gold grenade chain. I got the logo of the hand grenade, you know. I started coming up with my catchphrase, Blake Bulletproof Troop, and overdropping warheads on people's foreheads. When hand grenades start flying, bodies start dropping. Right. And I, <laughs> you know, and yeah. I started coming up with a bunch of things to boost the entertainment value of my myself, a brand or something for people to recognize. Where not only do I have a name for like Bulletproof Troop, I got my Bulletproof Troop with my Bulletproof Troopette, so other people feel like they're a part of it. I got team colors which are camouflage, so they can be any type of camera right. but so at the fights I have 
100 people wearing my t-shirt. So when I would sell tickets to a fight, I'd get 20% of the ticket sale. Right. I'd give people a free t-shirt with them. I'd be like, yo, wear this to the fight. And then I got 100 plus people at the fight rocking my shit. And all these people are like, who the fuck is this bulletproof troop guy? Or like, right. why do all these people have that shirt? So by building that brand, it really, it started, A, to increase the, inter- I tried to increase, increase the entertainment value of my brand, like the catchphrases and all that Man, type so of stuff. We want to see who you really are. I prefer the bulletproof boogeyman. <laughs> the bulletproof bullet- boogeyman, bulletproof troop is coming for the LXF jewelry Friday the 13th. The return of the nightmare. Ladies and gentlemen, bulletproof Blake troop. And then it showed other people that had their own brand that I can be an asset to them. When I say other Our people team. have their own brand, I'm talking about fight promotions. Where they started treating me not just like some dude out here fighting motherfuckers. But it's a business. With value. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So I get, when I fight, I get my check filled out to both from True LLC. And I'm like, oh shit, all right. You know, like, and they look, it's a little thing, but people that run businesses look at small things big. Yeah. They look at business maneuvers much hey. different. Yeah. Hey. You know, and when people can. Well, you can be doing something like you can have talent, it's talent. But when they can actually see that assets can come out of it, it means more, it's, it, it can be the same thing, but it means more when it has assets behind it. Right, and, and a company that has their, their own brand, they want to push people that are already out there pushing themselves. Right. They don't want to take a guy from zero and build everything up from it. They used to do it, but they don't do it anymore. I mean, it happens a little bit, you know. These might be big crossover athletes coming and things like that, but... In the entertainment business, period. That's how some people get effed over, because they think that, the, yeah, they're marketable and they have a lot of talent, but... Once they get into those, you know, that loophole, which they say, okay, yeah, you want to, and they, and, they, and the people in the industry heads, the people who are doing these creative things want to be famous, not rich. So I want to be rich. You want to be famous. Let me invest my money in you and I'm going to take this percentage. And then basically, eventually out of all the work you do, I got to get my end first. You feel me? Yep. And then you get yours second. So exactly. That's a big thing that happens in a lot of whether fighting or anywhere in the entertainment, yeah. there's a lot of very talented people who are not good businessmen. Right. It's why you see a lot of these people are broke, you know, like uh, MC Hammer. That motherfucker was huge. Broke as fuck now. There's a lot of people like that. And it's not because they aren't talented, it's just because they didn't know how to do business very well, you right. know? There's a lot of aspects that go into, into business when I say that, but being able to do business increases your value to other people that do business right and then you don't get fucked around as much because they realize you're not just some fucking idiot yeah know? so yeah so do you have any further plans or yeah so i have i have about 14 or 15 professional mma fights and i've been transferring myself over into as much talking roles now where i don't i love to fight but the it's just a lot of investment for a little payoff and a ton of risk right well, i'm trying to transfer myself into doing things like um combat sports analysis which i did on tv yesterday for lights out extreme fighting and uh, i'm on tv every week in 150 regions around the com- country doing combat sports analysis for professional wrestling because i can talk about fighting or combat sports seven days a week two or three times a day if i need to i can only fight once every you know, like you go and just beat the fuck out of the yeah, you could potentially fight again in a few weeks but it usually doesn't go like that you got eight weeks 12 weeks of lead up training like and it's risk, you don't even know if you're gonna win, you might only get, so you get if I need a show money and then a win bonus. Ooh. So, so, right, so that's win. why they say that, like, uh, the winner you, get more, pay more than the... Uh, typically, money. right, and so, you don't even necessarily know how much money you're gonna make. Fuck, you could tear, you could have some type of really bad injury and be, be on the shelf for, fuck, who knows how long. Yeah. So the amount of risk in that, the amount of investment in, t- in terms of time, money, effort, right. I've learned enough there where I'm trying to transition my brand into other areas. I've built enough legitimacy behind my brand uh, in terms of being a, a badass in combat sports right. and knowing what the fuck's up with it. And then being a businessman who can come out and talk about a lot of this stuff. So I'm really trying to transfer into as much talking analyst type roles as possible because I, like I said, I can do that all the time. I've also been trying to transfer over into professional wrestling. I actually recently moved to Tampa, Florida for pro wrestling training in December wow. of 2020 uh, and I fucking love Florida I'm actually still living out there so about seven eight months ago eight and a half months ago fuck, I moved out there to focus 100% on pro wrestling training uh, 
I'll be making my debut very soon, probably in the next two or three months. All right. Good. So I'm trying to get into as much entertainment stuff as possible. And so my whole brand of Bulletproof Truth, like, which is me, I am Bulletproof Truth, right. is very uh, driven from professional wrestling personalities. The closest right. thing to fighting and like building a fight persona is pro wrestling. Those motherfuckers are entertainers. You smell what the rock is. I was like, about to bring him up. Um, so I'll, I'll get to him next. He's somebody yeah. I really look up to. But so I looked at a lot of these guys in professional wrestling. And things that they did to become successful. Hulk Hogan had his Hulkamaniacs. I got my bulletproof troopers, bulletproof troopettes. Right. Ric Flair, woo, <laughs> bang. Yeah. Right. I have a bunch of different things where I didn't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. I just looked at other motherfuckers' wheels and I was like, oh, here's how I can use that. Do your version of what they did. Exactly. A genuine version of it for myself. Yeah. Like... Bulletproof Troopers and Bulletproof Troopettes that came directly from Hulk Hogan's Hulkamaniacs. But I didn't bite his shit. I just came up with something else. But I got the idea from somebody who was very yeah, successful yeah, in using it's something. Entertainment. Already. So exactly. Like you're not. He's not the only one that did it. You're not gonna be the last person to do it. So exactly. It's kind of like it's your chance to do your image of them to your best ability to exactly. become bulletproof truth. Exactly, and like like I said, I didn't have to go reinvent the wheel. I just looked at other motherfuckers that were successful in something very similar to what I was trying to do. Right. And a big thing like with the Hulkamaniacs or anything else is you start making a group where people feel like they're a part of it. That's why I have team colors with the camouflage and I give everyone all these shirts. So if they're at the fights and they don't know each other, but they got the shirt on, bam, instantly Oh yeah, talking. you just automatically just made a acquaintance. Exactly, yeah. you know, just like any sports team, they got team colors. You'll see motherfuckers wearing those colors and all that shit where people want to be a part of something. So trying to create something that people want to be a part of. And can bring people together at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, that's dope. So, and, and make money and build my brand at the same time. Right. So it's, it's, there's a whole like, bunch. It's support of the love for you. You feel me? It's kind of like, we want to see you do more. But you can't want to see me do more if you don't support it. So it's, it's basically supporting what you love right and, and if I'm, you love me then i make it easy for people to do that when i have shirts for sale and stickers and and whatever whatever else there is going on i make it easy for people to be supportive you know yeah so um all right so you want to get a camera your uh your hook up to where to find you and what it yeah like so you can come over anything. to blake troop.com pick up some merch i got a whole bunch of dope shit i got a bunch of guy stuff girl stuff uh, all kinds of things you can check me out at Bulletproof Troop on Instagram, at Big Troop 22 on Twitter, or Facebook.com forward slash Bulletproof Troop. I got all kinds of fun shit. My page is a lot of fun. Check out the story. I mean, it's only about a third of, of me, and the rest is at fights and all kinds of fun other stuff to watch. Um, and even with that, like, I treat my Instagram page, my social media as a source of entertainment. Right. And then I sprinkle my shit in, you know? Right. Where it's not all about me. People want to see what's going on in my story. You never know fucks to be on it. I see you active, man. You know, and I see a lot of adventurous stuff going on your page from you, you know, going beach to beach or country to country or maybe you just state to state, whatever. You may just travel, right. you know what I'm saying? And well, that's, and that's like some of the fun shit that I do with me where I definitely put a lot of fun stuff on there. But even shit like fights or like fucking people falling and hurting themselves fucking yeah. silly shit like I got Tuesday snooze day where somebody's getting knocked the fuck out Wednesday yeah. swing day is usually a scrap Thursday ham is usually someone getting I've knocked out I've seen that too fail Friday where I just have a bunch of different stuff where hey, people are entertained they want to see see what's on the page and then they see all my other stuff sprinkled in there because it was if it was all bulletproof troop all the time people are a lot yeah, less yeah, yeah, interested yeah. in that because it's still bulletproof troop but at the same time it's kind of like let's say you do Tuesday snooze day I'm going to post something that Bulletproof Truth finds as exciting or funny, and maybe you guys will like it too. You exactly. Feel? So you get to share a bit of your personality with them on the side that they like you from. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because I watch it. I'm not going to lie. Like, I, I look forward to seeing Tuesday Snooze Day. Most of the stuff I see, it's kind of like, you know, we should be aware of them at the same time. Like, I see somebody fly over a freeway. Like, I don't know how you do that. Right, that one was fucking Yeah, wild. like, it's like, what did you do in order to fly over a freeway onto another freeway? Like, dude, that car fucking flew, too. That one thing was, like, 50 feet in the air. Like, dude, that, right. they had to be mashing. But that's the stuff where, and now it, people send that to their friends. Yeah, exactly. Like, bro, look like, at hey, this, bro. This is wild. Like, you feel me? And then we got to, it's automatically attached to you. So that's dope. And so I use the insights on my Instagram. I, it's a tool for me to build my business. Like, I have fun and, and spend waste, waste time on social media. 
but it's a tool for me to build my business. So I have a business page. I look at the inside. The majority of my fans are men between the ages of 18 and 35. And they're probably fight fans if they follow me. So I fucking put up a lot of like street fights and and shit that young men would probably get a kick out of, you know? Um, it's a lot of very strategic strategic things to build my brand. It makes sense. You know, same thing with uh, like Facebook, which I have a totally different way that I do things on there because there's forums on Facebook. So I'll post like a Tuesday, Tuesday might be a, a karate knockout. I go post out like four or five martial arts uh, forums. Right. Where I posted one like two or three days ago. It's got like 190,000 views. It's fucking bananas to me, kind of. But right. I just, but if I had just posted it on my page, it might not. Yeah, well, if I just posted it on my page, it probably would have gotten a few hundred or whatever. Right. But I put my stuff into places where people are going to be able to see it. And then that shit builds my brand too. Where Facebook, I have a totally different strategy for it. Now, it's the same content, but the way I put the content out. Yeah. Um, you know, but there's a lot of different tools out there that are free. Like Instagram is totally free to use. It's just how you're going to use it. Same with Facebook. How are you going to use it? Um, and being strategic about that shit, you know? Right, um, it takes strategy. I think we can get a lot more shit done than people realize through energy and effort. Money's great to have. I'm not going to say, you know, money. You can energy and effort going to bring the money. Exactly. You know, you can do things like, like I said, I shared. Uh, like, it was a judo guy against a karate guy. Karate guy's kind of beating him up. Judo guy gets him, slam, 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 throws him out of the ring. And I post that in a few martial arts forms, and now it's just got like 190,000 views. Where I just was strategic about some energy that I put out and I put it in a way that fucking ended up paying off. I got like 500 new followers on my fa Facebook athlete page and shit. Like, just by being smart about using some of the free tools out there and strategically using them. Right. I didn't just post it. I went and posted it in forms that I thought people would want to see it. Right. And fucking a lot of people ended up sharing. Got like fucking thousand shares or some shit. Like, and like social media is a game changer these days. Because... You like, gotta know how to use it. Yeah, you know, the big thing it used to be for entertainment and relating to people is television. A lot of motherfuckers don't really watch TV anymore. We are face down in our phones way more than we're either, watching TV. Either apps or social media. It's, it's, it's either you watching Hulu or Netflix or something, or you watching social media. But people, I think, watch social media more than TV or more than anything on the app. So, and such a wide demographic, too, where it's kids, adults, older people. You know, obviously more kids and, and adults than older people, but still, like, guys, girls, this country, that country, fucking everywhere. People use social media, and, and to, to not be utilizing that tool in an effective and, like, strategic way is just, I, I wouldn't say it's a waste of a tool, but it can be utilized a lot better than I think a lot of people use it. You know, like, there's dudes out there making fucking bank for each other. The Paul Brothers, Jake Paul and Logan Paul, those motherfuckers have millions and millions and millions of YouTube subscribers. I bet they make a lot of fucking money through their YouTube. You know? They do. I, I guarantee you they do. And that's like some of the effort, like like you guys out here with cameras fucking putting your skits together and then posting that shit. Like, bro, where it's, it's effort. I mean, yeah, there's some money investment for equipment and stuff. But going out and putting energy into things to start building building a brand, you know? Yeah. A lot of people expect shit to be handed to them when they think that you just like get lucky. Oh, I'm just gonna meet someone one day, and they're uh, oh, there's like I'm not gonna say that there's not some luck involved in things because well, there's there's some luck in, in life, like time. It's timing, like it, everything happens when it's supposed to. You know? I think so. that, but like the more prepared I am for things, the luckier I seem to get. Right. You know where it's like almost like preparation. It has, is preparation. You know, and like the the, what, the things that people do, you know, a lot of people want to sit around and wait for opportunities instead of going out and doing it. You know, like uh, you guys are out here starting a channel on your own, doing all that shit instead of something like, hey, you should go do, you know, like a, a boss or a manager or whatever. Like, hey, go do this X Y Z. Because they're being told to do it, not because right. they're like, dude, I'm gonna go out here and proactively do things to build my brand and put myself in a position where a lot more eyes are gonna see me. And that's what a lot of people get, let's say, messed up by because. They look for managers or they look for people to do it for them and they, and they find it easy but it ain't easy when you recognize that you paid for all that shit they did and then you end up owing them the money and you really never see no money because who's going to invest their money in, in putting the footwork for you for free you know what i'm saying absolutely besides yourself it's like yeah. nipsey said put it on your back and run with you gotta put it on your back and run with it first then people will take off running after you i i agree 100 with that and i think a big reason why that happens is because we go to school and here's what your homework is here's what we're doing 
people are used to being told what the fuck is going on. Right. They're not used to being able to think for themselves or like, oh, I should go do this. We weren't taught to be autonomous. Exactly. They're used to being told what to do and, yeah. and follow. They prepare us to work for people. That's basically what they do in school. I agree, hundred percent. Yeah. You know, but that doesn't mean people fuckers can't go out there and start doing things for themselves. They want to find somebody else to do a lot of, a lot of stuff. Footwork for them. Yeah. They lazy. Basically, that's all it is. But being willing to learn things, because right. you know, you you do that because you're like, fuck, I'm gonna learn how to do this. You get better. Anytime we start doing something, we're not fucking nearly as good as the next like person is. Yeah, you're like, fuck, no. pay for it. You know, and you don't have to pay for it. And but you're gonna have to put in the hours and the time and shit. Where right. I was talking about effort earlier, like put in some of that effort, figure out some of the things you need to do, or sitting down, like I said, where I studied Hulk Hogan or a bunch of the professional wrestling personalities, and then use some of the the concepts they had in my own genuine way, where you can go out and learn a bunch of this shit. I mean, a lot of people just want things to be done for them already, you know, like, I, I can't be mad at those people, because if anything, I'm okay with it, because they're making my life easier. If everybody was a go-getter... Yeah, you have a whole lot of go-getters that goes against you. Yeah. You know, I'm not, I'm not mad at that. I'd rather people be asking me for, hey, can you help me some branding stuff, blah, 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 this or that, than everybody having their own brand and knowing how to run that shit, you know? Yeah. We've both been... been here... And then we get, we're climbing that ladder and we see each other like, oh, bro, you climbing the ladder too? Let's, let's climb this thing together, yeah, Everybody's man. got goals and dreams and all this stuff, but the difference between, in my opinion, a goal and a dream is a plan. Like, figuring out what the fuck you want, starting to create a plan, and then going out there and putting out yeah, that shit. Because everybody, there's something everybody wants to do, whether it's be an astronaut or this or that, rapping, Are fighting. you willing to do what it takes to get there is the question. What, or even sit down and figure out what it's going to take to get there and then do it on and top of that. And then being willing to do it, yeah. Because so, like, it's going to take will at some point. A lot of people, I feel like, drift through life. And when I say drift, I mean like a leaf floating down the river. That leaf's not really sure where it's going. It's going where the wherever the fuck the river wants to take it, wherever life's going to take it. Right. Versus being an arrow that's shot at a target. That motherfucker has purpose and like yeah. intent with what it's doing. And it, has a, it has a goal. It's a target. The goal, the target is the goal, so if you're an arrow, that's how you got to basically picture yourself, man. That's in the truth, man. You got game, you know what I'm saying? If you're going to look at yourself as anything, look at yourself as an arrow. And no arrow should be shot without a target. Right, and so like another big one is people want to talk about progress. In order to have progress, you have to have a destination. Because not all movement equates to progress. Right, no. If you're just... You could just be moving sometimes. You know, I'm like, maybe it'll help you, maybe it won't. But if you have a plan and, and a destination and a plan to get there, then you can start tracking your progress or lack of progress. Right. You know? Maybe I need to change some of my shit because I'm not getting whatever. I'm not getting close to what this goal is. You know, like, for me, with building this, this whole personality and stuff, where I set a bunch of different things, with, you know, for the branding, merchandise, catchphrases, selling tickets, you know, being profitable to other businesses so they want to fuck with me. Obviously, training and fighting. When I start breaking these down into components, all right, what can I do better on each of these? You know, coming up, so I got this design, I got that design, I got my logo, where I can start building my brand stuff, building my merchandise and all this stuff. Because I sat down, I broke all this shit down, I looked at it, where it's, I like, what? Just like, so you, you think of Nike or McDonald's, swoosh, the M. Every major company had, has a fucking logo, right. everything. So I was like, fuck, I need to have a logo too. You know, so looking at things like that where it's, and sometimes you gotta read through the lines. You know, like I didn't go to school for marketing and stuff like that. So I'm just looking around at parents. What, what other things have been fucking super successful? Like, what do these super successful companies all have in common? Like logos, colors, a bunch of things like that. Um, you know, a, another big thing where I said creating a team feeling with, with my brand. Where it's like at the Lakers, where it's like a fucking the Lake Show, you know, a purple and gold, you know, where it's a bunch of things that make people feel like they're a part of it. You don't necessarily have to have a Lakers jersey or, or, or shirt even on if you wear purple or, or gold, you know. Making it so people feel like they're a part of something because everybody wants to be a fucking part of something. Yes, you know? and, and that's that's. It's like, how do you exist if you're not a part of something, like? You can either be a part of, even if, even though, let's say you bulletproof truth, right? And then you have all these fans, right? All these fans make you a part of something. 
Because if you didn't have them, what would you be a part of? 100%. So, you get what I'm saying? So it's like we all are a part of something. If we, it, it depends on what we invest our energy in. We're a part of whatever we invest our energy in. It don't matter if you have people over here who do biker clubs or car clubs or fighting. Like, Remember you said uh, you branded yourself in order to you know get people to say, okay, oh, you're a bulletproof. Ah, like, yeah. You automatically just put two people into a position to where they came together on the behalf of your interests. You know what I'm saying? So right. you're a part of that. And I try to make it as easy as possible for those people where it's, you know, having merchandise, giving all these people a free t-shirt when they buy a ticket, which was about half my profit from the ticket sale. But then I counted that. It's like seven bucks. So hundred something tickets. That's like $700. But then I, I calculated that as advertisement cost because now everybody at that show, my fan or not, or yeah. promoter, everybody sees all these motherfuckers like, God damn, that boss a fuckload of fans here. Right. Because otherwise you know who the fuck these fans are. You know what? It's kind, of, it's kind of like one time, right? You know, you, you sell your tickets and then you have those people come to your show. It's the same thing. You sell those tickets, but what is going to make them people buy your tickets is the question. So you say, okay, I give out one shirt with the ticket, although this is going to be this. These, they're going to wear the shirt because they came on behalf of me. And now they got a shirt to represent me. So now it's kind of like we're going to represent our interests together. You know what I'm saying? And right. it helps you on behalf of them caring. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Where it's, it's good for everybody. And then all these people, like, if someone goes to a fight by themselves, there's fucking 100 people that they can go sit down and talk to because they know who all my fans are already. Where it's a big... It's, I try and make it as easy as possible for people to feel like they're a part of it. You know? Right, that's dope. Like, I call myself Bulletproof Troop. I got my Bulletproof Troopers, Bulletproof Troopettes, but together we are the Bulletproof Troop. Yeah. You know, we're actually... Basically, yeah. And people want to be a part of shit, you know, to make it easy for them. Yeah, all right. I mean... Well, it was nice talking with you. It was great talking to you, brother. Yeah. I'm fucking real proud of you, man. I've learned a lot, you know, just by listening. And, you know, I thank you and I appreciate you, bro. And... May you just reach so many endeavors to where, like, <laughs> you already recruited me, put it like that, you know what I'm saying? I'm wearing it now, so. That's what I'm talking about, brother. I'm a trooper now, you know what I'm saying? And that's, and that's good, man. I wish you the best in everything you want to do, man. I appreciate that. I got big aspirations. I'm working my ass off for Got shit planned out, mapped out, putting in the work, you know? I moved to a state I never thought. I've, I've only lived in California. I've to Florida just to chase my fucking dreams you know but you know what they put say myself when, out there when you move when you move out your comfort zone i, I was told by lorenz dobson the 1500 uh academy you know what i'm saying you can google it or whatever but lorenz dobson the 1500 uh he told me to get uncomfortable he said what you know is what you know you got that but what counts is the things that you're not comfortable doing because that opened up more windows for you and so you need to get uncomfortable you know? You know, things like that stick with me. And it kind of like, you basically confirmed that with what you just said, basically. People are lazy and they want to do what they feel like doing because it's comfortable for them. But once you get out that comfort zone, you don't want too many people out that comfort zone because it helps you, <laughs> basically. So. Well, I mean, it's just like you learn, or a person learning how to do something new. You learning how to, to make music. You're getting uncomfortable. Trying shit you don't know. Being a beginner, asking questions and shit where it's like, oh, no, I don't do that. I'm just going to pay somebody else for it. Right. You know, like, what no happens one. outside the comfort zone? I agree 100% with that. Uh, challenging ourselves, you know, because people that don't challenge themselves, it's very easy to start slowing down and and staying where we're at. And like, bro, it gets really it quick. Gets old. Months can go by like fucking. It gets old. With COVID now, it's been, what, 18 months? And a lot of motherfuckers are in the exact same place or even potentially behind where they were. Right. You know, where if people aren't always trying to grow and, and evolve, then they're going to get left behind. And you're not going to grow and evolve just doing things within your comfort zone. And whether that's professional, whatever type, you know, it could be any type of thing. Once so, you recognize there's a problem, you need to identify the problem and then execute the problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And even if it, that's, uh, like some people think of shares and likes and all that. Like, okay, even if you share video six times a day and, and it creates not that many fans or it may not create none at all you got to say okay that plan is getting old but when you stick to that plan and you continue that plan hoping one day that it'll work it's not gonna it, it may work i mean luck works like that but you're gonna be waiting a minute you know what i'm saying like keep doing it if you want to you know what i'm saying right. you got to get out that comfort zone of doing that and then trying something else and then Maybe that way we'll pull somebody in, but then you're doing stuff another way, then that's going to pull something in, then you're doing stuff another way, then that's going to pull something in. Now you got all these things pulling something in at one time. It's better for you. Absolutely. And that's where branding coming from, fighting coming from, 
everything. Yeah. So being able to take a look at things and if things are working or not and why they may or may not be working and if it's something that's worth putting the energy into. Because all of us, every single one of us, we got 24 hours in the day. We have a limited amount of time, a limited amount of energy, focus, concentration, patience. I call them our natural resources. Right. So you got to be strategic about that shit. You know, figuring out, that's why I say like mapping things out. So I got to get this shit done. Let me see what else I end up putting on top of that. All right. We'll wrap it up from there, man. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Bang, bang, bulletproof gangs.